Hello friends, uh, I'm here today to explain the ray diagram formation by lenses and before moving to that I will first explain what do you mean by convex lens and what is concave lens. So let's start. So you can see here that we have two kinds of spherical lenses. One is the convex lens also termed as the converging lens. Another is the concave lens also called as the diverging lens, right? So now let's see why convex lens is called a converging lens and why the concave lens is called a diverging lens. Before that, let's see what is what are their shapes, how do they look like. So a convex lens looks like this, whereas a concave lens has a shape like this. So, a convex lens is a lens who, whose spherical surfaces are bulged out, right? So, the, the, these are the spherical surfaces. This is the spherical surface 1, this is the spherical surface 2 and they are bulged out. They are coming outside, right? Bulging out. You know what is a bulge, right? So, if you have, a, let's say, this water or, or anything, any thread, then the bulge in the, in the thread is like this. So, this is the bulge, right? This is the bulge. So, I say this is bulged out. I will say this is bulge in. Alright, so here what you see, here you see that the spherical surfaces are bulged out. So when this happens, it is called a convex lens and when the spherical surfaces are bulged in, the lens is called as the concave lens. Okay, so now let's understand few terms related to these lenses before moving to the ray diagram. So the first is the convex lens. So as you know that convex lens has a shape like this in which the spherical surfaces are bulged out. Now we are using lenses to form the ray diagram. So for that I need a principal axis. You know what is a principal axis right? So principal axis is a reference line. So that you, where you put your object, where the image is formed, where all the uh, points are marked like focus, center of curvature right okay so this is the principal axis also called as the optic axis why it is called the optic axis as it passes through the center of the lens which is called the optical center so this point o is called the optical center of the lens so that is why this line which is passing through o is called as optic axis okay now as you see that these two spherical surfaces are the part of two spheres, right? So if I just complete this sphere, I'll, I'll see they, that this is the sphere 1 and this is the sphere 2, right? So you know that each sphere has its center. So the center is somewhat here and it, here it is here. So for a lens, for a convex lens, I have two center of curvatures, right? Let me call them as C1 and C2. Now I know that the point exactly in the middle of the optical center and the curvature is the point of focus. So I will mark it as F1. I will mark this as F2. Right. So let me just remake this diagram again without these dotted lines. Make sure that your convex lens is symmetrical. Right, it should not be like this that it is thinner in this end and it is thicker in this end. This is wrong. This is also wrong. The correct depiction of the convex lens should be symmetrical. Right, it should be symmetrical. You can also see by making a line through the center so that you are aware that the lens is correct okay so I have the convex lens I will mark the optic axis which will pass through the center of the lens and the center of the lens is called the O the optical center my next step is to mark the center of curvature so here is one thing that we don't mark the center of curvature as C1 and C2 instead we replace C1 by 2F1. We replace C2 by 2F2. Why do I do that? First of all, it is a 
convention which is being used in ncrt and other thing you can do it you can either use c1 you can either use 2f1 both are correct but why i am using c1 as 2f1 because you know that the distance from the optical center to the curvature is twice the distance from the optical center to the focus right for that i can write c1 as twice of f1 so what that's what i'll be doing so this is 2f1 this is 2f2 make sure that the distance which you are marking the points 2f1 and 2f2 which you are marking on the principal axis are equidistant from the optical center both ways so next step is to mark the focus so exactly in the center i will be marking f1 and exactly here f2 right so this is the complete depiction of a convex lens with all the terms written and marked so let me tell you why the convex lens is called a con converging lens right okay so as you are already familiar that an object at infinity right if if the object is at infinity if my source of light is at infinity then the light the the rays of light which are coming from the object are treated as as if they are coming parallel to the principal axis right so let me just draw it so the, these are the parallel rays of light which are you know parallel to the principal axis and you know that what do lenses do the lenses do refraction right so what will happen there will be bending of light the light is coming in a straight path but it will bend because of the refraction right so after bending the light passes through the focus after bending the light passes through the focus actually that is rule number 1 which i will be stating in few minutes so the light rays which are coming parallel to the principal axis after refraction converges at a point called focus right so it's that simple in this case the object is at infinity because the light rays are coming from infinity they are parallel and the image formed is at focus f2 right now since the light rays are converging after the refraction that is why the convex lens is called converging lens because it converges the light rays at a point f2 right now let's come to the second lens which is concave lens So the second kind of lens is the concave lens also termed as the diverging lens As I have already explained the shape of the concave lens looks like this it also has to be symmetrical both ways make sure that you do that So both the spherical surface spherical surface 1 and spherical surface 2 has to be symmetrical like you know Okay So the center of the concave lens is your optical center and the next step is to draw the principal axis I am not using the scale here but make sure that you use the scale before you start drawing Okay So what is the next step the next step is to mark the center of curvature so i am marking here 2f1 here 2f2 f1 f2 right so i'll i'll be doing the same thing with the concave lens let's try it the light rays are coming parallel to the principal axis make sure that you start the bending from the center of the lens bending up lens ke center se hi start karenge now what happens the light rays after bending they diverge after bending after the refraction they diverge from each other so you see that they will never meet at this side but if you are standing here and if your friend is standing here and watching this ray of light coming what he will see he will see that the the line the light is coming from this point 
right? He will see that the source of light is sitting at f1. So for him, the source of light is not infinity. The source of light is at focus f1, right? So I'll be doing, I'll just be extending these point lines. And here is my virtual image, right? Here is my virtual image of the object. Why virtual? Because the lines are not actually meeting. The ray of light is not actually meeting here. Right? Okay. So this is the reason why a concave lens is called a diverging lens. Because the light rays coming parallel to the principal axis diverge after refraction. And they appear to meet backwards at a point focus F1. Alright. So we are all done with the convex and concave lenses. Let's understand few rules. Rules. What are the rules? Rules to make the ray diagram. So the first rule is. So I will be explaining the rule for the convex lens. It is the same for the concave lens also. There are three rules that you have to keep in mind. Draw the convex lens. Mark the optical center. Mark 2F1, 2F2, F1, F2. Okay, so the first rule says that the light coming parallel to the principal axis which I have already explained it to you after refraction converges at a point called focus, right? F2. You have to be specified because there are two focus points. So you have to be specific that you are telling the correct focus. You are correct, telling the correct term which is F2. Right? So this is the first rule. The second rule is. So the second rule is just the reverse of the first rule. Right? So in this rule, the light passing through focus F1 after refraction goes parallel to the principal axis. It is just the reverse of the first case. In this case, the light was coming parallel and after refraction passing through focus. But in this case, the light is passing through focus and after refraction will go parallel to the principal axis. Let's move to case number 3. Okay. So case number 3 is that the rule number 3 is the light ray passing through the optical center suffers no refraction, right? It, it suffers no refraction, no bending. It just goes straight. Okay, so for that I will be needing a scale. I am having this pen here. I can draw it. Okay, so I am asked, I am uh, I'm just telling that the ray of light passing through the optical center goes straight without any bending. So this is your rule number three. Okay, so these are the three rules which you have to follow while making ray diagrams and as you are already familiar that whenever you make an image of an any object, you just need two light rays, right? Minimum you need two light rays. So why to make three, four, five, right? Why to complicate the problem? So just make, just use any two light rays. You will be using this more frequently, this one. This rule you will be using in every case. And from these two, you can choose whichever you want. Okay, so let's start with the ray diagram. So I will be teaching the ray diagram formation by convex lenses only in this video. Ray diagram for convex lens. Two F one, two F two. F1, F2, right? Okay, so you can 
clearly see that what are the possible positions for the object right the first position for the object is the infinity so that is that is counted as one the second case would be when the object is beyond 2f1 when it is when it is before right beyond 2f1 third case will be the when the object is at 2f1 fourth case will be when the object is between 2f1 and f1 fifth case will be when the object is at f1 and the sixth case will be when the object is between f1 and o so there are total six cases that we will be doing right now so the first case you already know i'm just making it again when the object is at infinity so when the object is at infinity the light rays coming from the object are parallel to the principal axis and you know that from rule number 1 after refraction they pass through the focus right i am not using the scale but you should use the scale so the image is formed at f2 how do i know the image is formed here i will see the intersection point so this is the point where the two light rays are meeting right they are intersecting so three things you have to keep in mind while doing the ray diagram and after you have made the ray diagram is to write the position of image so image the image is formed at f2 the second thing is the size of the image what is the size it is a point size right you can write point size you can write highly diminished and what is the nature of the image how will you decide the nature so if the solid lines are meeting it is a real image right and if the virtual if, if the lines are appear to meet then it is a virtual image so the nature here is real and inverted this this is the nature of the image right so let's move to the second case as you are already familiar the next possible case is when the object is beyond 2f1 when object is beyond 2f1 okay so this is the convex lens make sure that it is symmetrical draw the optical optic axis mark all the terms right so place the object beyond 2f1 right object ko 2f1 ke piche rakhenge object ko aise mark karte hain with an arrow label the object ab now i have to form the image of this object using this convex lens and i know that to form the image i need two rays of light so two rays of light i need so the first rule says that the light going parallel to principal axis passes through focus right and i told you that you will be using rule number 3 frequently so from rule number 3 the light passing through the optical center goes straight goes suffers no refraction right it suffers no bending so you should be using the scale for this uh, rule because it is very tricky because you have to make a straight line all through this way so this is the intersection point and this is the image right so this is my image which is because the intersection point is below the principal axis so you will be making your image like this aise honi chahiye aise nahi honi chahiye this is wrong this is correct so let's label the image a prime b prime and let's write the necessary things which which is the position of image you can clearly see it is formed between f2 and 2f2 so it is between f2 and 2f2 what is the size of the image you can measure it using a scale just measure its length measure its length you will see that the height of the image is smaller than the height of the object right so you can write diminish diminish means the size of the image is less than the size of the object then we have to write the nature so nature is again real and inverted right so this is case number 2 now let's move on to case number 3 
So for case number three, where will be the object? When the object is? Okay, so let's just mark the points first. In that way, it is more easy to identify. Okay, so previously I placed the object beyond 2F1. At this point, I will be placing the object at 2F1. Label the object. From rule number 1, the light going parallel to principal axis passes through focus. And from rule number 3, the light going passing through the optical center goes straight, right? Because for this case, the image will be formed exactly at 2F2. Iske niche banega image. तो अगर थोड़ी बहुत भी गड़बड़ हो गई लाइन में थोड़ी बहुत भी लाइन स्ट्रेट नहीं बनी तो आपके जो इंटरसेक्शन पॉइंट है वो थोड़ा लेफ्ट राइट right हो जाएगा सो द इमेज इज फॉर्मड एट 2f2 सो इमेज का पोजीशन क्या है एट 2f2 साइज कैसा है इमेज का सेम साइज जस्ट मेजर इट इट इज द सेम साइज एज दैट ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट सो दिस इज सेम साइज and what is the nature again real and inverted right again real and inverted so this is my case number three let's move on to case number four okay so let me write here when the object is at 2f1 now you can just guess that the next case will be when the object is between 2f1 and f1 so that is the case number four right so let's do case number four when the object is between 2f1 and f1 draw the convex lens draw the optic axis mark 2f1 2f2 f1 and f2 i have to place the object between 2f1 and f1 so you can place anywhere kahi pe bhi rakh lo main yahan rakh rahi Thoda closer to 2F1, you can place anywhere you want. So, label the object. First rule ke according. Light after refraction passes through focus. And according to the second rule, the light passing through the optical center. goes straight right so this, this is the intersection point and the image is formed here so this is the image this is your image so the label this a dash b dash and just write all the three things which is position so position is beyond 2f2 2f2 ke piche bani hai image size kaisa hai bada hai as compared to the object so you can write enlarged nature kaisa hai still real and inverted right okay so now only two cases are left let's do that fifth case so for the fifth case my object will be at f1 right object focus pe rahega sixth case ke liye let's draw the convex lens optic axis 2f1 2f2 f1 f2 right so i'm placing the object at f1 let's draw this rule number one k according so for according to rule number one the light going parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through focus right and according to rule number three the light going passing through the optical center also goes straight so can you see that both the lines, both the rays of light are going parallel to each other. They will never meet. I mean, they will meet, but they will meet at infinity, right? So this is the object. And since the intersection point is not on the principal axis anywhere, as they are going parallel to each other, and we know that when the light rays are parallel, when the, when the object is at infinity, right? So infinity pe hota hai object, to light rays parallel aati hai. तो वही सेम लॉजिक अप्लाई करेंगे क्योंकि लाइट रेस पैरेलल जा रही हैं तो इसका मतलब है वो कहां मिल रही हैं जाके इन्फिनिटी पे 
so the position of the image is at infinity what will be the size the size will be highly enlarged very very enlarged nature still real and inverted why real because still the lines are solid right these are the actual rays of light so the image would be real and inverted right okay let's move to case number 6 and this is the final case for this the object will be between f1 and o when the object is between f1 and optical center convex lens principal axis 2f1 2f2 f1 f2 and the object is here between f1 and o so this is the label and let's draw the ray diagram for this okay so the light ray going uh, parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus i'm not using the scale anywhere you should use the scale and this from the third rule the light passing through the optical center go straight so can you see that the light rays are diverging they are not parallel here the distance is less here the distance is more so as jaise jaise aap aage jayenge you will see that both the light rays diverge from each other aise failte hue ja rahi hain right so they are diverging which means if you extend these light rays agar aap isko piche ki taraf extend karte hain theek hai both rays you will find an intersection point you will find an intersection point if you just extend both the rays in the backward direction you will find an intersection point somewhere here and here is your image right so this is the image so basically why i am doing this because if a person is standing here and he is watching that the कहाँ से आ रही है ये लाइट यू नो वेयर इज द सोर्स ही और शी विल नॉट सी दैट दिस इज द सोर्स उसके लिए सोर्स जो होगा वो यहाँ बैठा होगा जो इमेजिनरी सोर्स होगा उसके लिए वर्चुअल सोर्स बट एक्चुअली में सोर्स जो है आपका वो तो ऑब्जेक्ट है जो एफ वन और ओ के बीच में है है ना सो ओनली द इमेज ऑफ दिस ऑब्जेक्ट अपीयर्स टू फॉर्म बियॉन्ड टू एफ वन राइट सो लेट्स ओके सो वन थिंग वॉज देर वेन यू मेक द इमेज Don't make a solid line. Make a dotted line, okay? Because it is a virtual image, na. So make a dotted arrow. Position of the image beyond two f one. Two f one ke piche bani hai. Size enlarged, badi bani hai. Object chota hai, image badi hai. Or nature kaisa hai? This time the nature is not real. Why? Because the डॉटेड लाइन्स आर मीटिंग राइट द डैश लाइन्स आर मीटिंग सॉलिड लाइन्स आर डाइवर्जिंग सो नेचर इज वर्चुअल एंड सिंस यू कैन सी दैट द ऑब्जेक्ट इज ऑल्सो अपराइट इट इज अब द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस एंड इमेज इज ऑल्सो अब द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस सो वर्चुअल एंड इरेक्ट ओके सो दैट्स इट दीज आर ऑल द सिक्स केसेस फॉर कॉन्वेक्स लेंस आई होप यू एंजॉय दीज केसेस एंड डू प्रैक्टिस दैम अ लॉट देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू ड्रॉ दैम फ्लॉलेसली राइट एंड विद द नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल बी कमिंग विद द रे डायग्राम्स फॉर कॉन्केव लेंस एंड विद द लेंस फॉर्मूला अलॉन्ग विद द न्यूमेरिकल्स ओके थैंक यू एवरी मच